When it comes to editing drawings, you need a way to select the entities in order to edit them. Selection tells CoilCAD which group of entities you need to modify. In most cases, we'll be using the mouse to select entities, but in a few cases, we'll be using the keyboard instead. There are two ways to select entities. Before starting an edit command, and this is then called grips editing, and after starting an editing command, which is called entity selection. And you'll probably find use for both of these methods, but in different kinds of editing operations. Let's start with grips editing. Grips editing starts when no command is active. And if we check the status bar, we can see that at the moment I do not have a command entered in my command line. And you select the entities by picking one or more of them with your cursor. And you'll notice now that the entity is made up of dashed lines and that depending on the shape of the entity, one or more blue squares will appear along the borders. CoilCAD responds in this way to let you know which entity you've picked. And it's these blue squares that are known as grips. Blue grips are also known as cold grips because their sole purpose is to show you where the grips are located on the entity. Now move the cursor over a grip and click on it. Notice that the grip turns red. This is known as a hot grip, the purpose of which is to edit the entity. Let's select another entity. Here I've selected an arc. I have the two end grips, the midpoint grip, and the center of the arc. Depending on which grip you click on, you will have different editing effects. So let's click on the center grip, and the center grip will allow me to move my arc. If, on the other hand, I click on the end grip, this will allow me to reposition the end point of my arc. So what we can say about hot grips is that, I'm just going to exit out of here now, is that central grips normally allow you to move the entity and peripheral grips tend to stretch the entity. And additional editing options will also be available in the command window. Once we've chosen a particular grip point, and here I'm going to click on the starting point of a new entity, click once more so that I've got my hot grip, and now in my command window we can see I have the following options, base point, copy, undo, and exit. Base point relocates the base point from the starting point. So what I'm going to do now is, is just going to type in B for base point and hit enter. I'm going to move my cursor to the new position and click. And if I drag down here, I can now reposition my starting point at this point. Let's select an entity and activate a hot grip and now I'm going to use one of the other command options, in this case C for copy. So I type in C and enter and the copy command will now allow me to create copies of the entity and when I want to stop copying I just hit escape. To erase an entity you don't need to use hot grips, you just simply select the entity and hit the delete key. Depending on the color of your background that you're doing your design on, you may want to actually change both the size and or the color of your grips. To do this, in the command line, enter Drafting Options. And hit Enter. This opens up the Options panel at the Drafting Options section. Just go down to Entity Selection and eGrips Color, and here you can choose which color to use for active, inactive, and mouse over eGrips. Of course, you can change the color here. And you can also change the eGrip size. Click on Apply and OK. To learn that to select an entity, all we need to do is click on it. Now, in many other programs, if you want to select multiple objects, you need to hold down the Shift key. But in CoilCAD, you don't need to do this. You just go along and click on Further Entities to select them. But of course, most drawings aren't going to be as simple as what we have here. And most designs will have dozens, if not hundreds of entities. So selecting them individually with a mouse is, of course, not an option. The quickest way to select a number of objects 
is to click anywhere on the screen with the left mouse button, drag out a marquee around the objects you wish to select, and click once more and all of the objects within that marquee have now been selected. Let's take this one step further. Dragging my mouse button from the left to the right, and here you can see I've completely encompassed three of the entities, but one of the entities isn't quite within this blue rectangle, will select only the entities completely within that blue rectangle. Let's go back a step. However, if I drag my mouse cursor from the right to the left, you see my rectangle is now green. Again, I have three entities completely within the rectangle, and one of them is half in and half out. When I now click, all of the entities have been selected. So using the mouse cursor to select objects, you have to be aware that dragging from the left to the right will select only those objects within the rectangle. But if you want to include more objects, but perhaps you can't quite drag your mouse all the way around it, just by dragging the mouse from the right to the left and touching all of the entities that you want included in your selection will in fact include not only the objects within the selection, but those that are actually touched by the marquee. Now, dragging a marquee around one or more entities is the simplest way of selecting them, but there are more selection modes. Selection areas need not be rectangular, they can also be polygons or fences. And these other selection modes become useful when editing commands ask you to specify entities. For example, the copy command prompts you as follows. I cancelled out of my previous commands and I'm just going to type in copy and hit enter. I'm now being asked which entities I want to copy. I could, of course, just go and click on one of the entities here with my mouse button, but I also have different ways to specify the entities that I want to copy. The first command that I have is called All, and this will select all entities that have not been locked down onto the page. So let's type in Copy again, and I'm now going to choose, instead of All, I'm going to choose Box. And box will give us the same selection method that we had before. I can either drag from the left to the right to create a selection within the rectangle, or I can drag from the right to the left to encompass any entities that are not only within a rectangle, but also being touched by the rectangle. Let's type copy again. And this time I'm going to type C for crossing this time only objects that are being touched by the crossing boundaries of a rectangle will be selected, as in this case. Copy, and now we're going to choose the selection method CP, or C polygon, and it will choose all objects within my polygon. Now there are so many ways of selecting entities that I can't demonstrate every single one in this tutorial, but you also have the option of using a select command and a copy command to basically create an identical set of copy selections as you may have previously made. Here in the command window, I typed the command select. The next command would have been to select entities, but instead of selecting an entity, I've just typed in the word copy. And because this is not a valid command for specified entities, I now get a list of the various methods of selecting my entities. So we've seen window, this would, the last command would select the last object that was created on the page. Crossing we've just seen is when the boundaries of our rectangle cross an object, box, or, and you've got further selection possibilities here, fence, cross line, polygon. For more information on what each of these separate selection methods means or entails, please check the help file included with the program. Now the selection options we were previously looking at are meant for selecting entities based on their location in the drawing. A different method is to select them by their properties, such as all entities with a particular line color or specific hyperlink. 
The Smart Select command will display a dialog box that lets us choose entities based on any of their properties. So let's just enter a Smart Select command. Now I could type in the command Smart Select or I can just click on the Smart Select icon in my Properties palette. And this again will open up my Smart Select window. And I'm just going to move this window over to one side for a second. We're going to stick with the property that we're looking for is Line Color. We can apply this Smart Selection to either the entire drawing, Entity, Circle, Polyline, but I'm not just looking for circles with a particular line color or polyline, so I'm just going to stick with multiple line color. And the value that I'm looking for is red. And if I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click on OK. And now my objects that all have this specific property have now been selected. As a final word, it's important to remember the following. CorelCAD command names, the commands that we've been using here so far, are compatible with those in AutoCAD and in Telecad for the most part. Some command names are identical, such as line, copy, stretch, etc. And others, however, can be different, such as erase, which in CorelCAD is known as delete. And in CorelCAD we talk about edit polyline and other programs talk about p-edit, etc, etc. However, CoilCAD ensures compatibility through the use of aliases, and in the CoilCAD user guide, you will find lists of commands for CoilCAD and corresponding aliases and boldfaces that are identical with commands used in AutoCAD.